Mr. Paradise, Pick and Paradise, and this is episode four of the Lock Picking Belt Ride Along series. So, if you guys have been following, uh, we did the 141 and the 140 on episode three, and that's labeled the pick. We are going to start doing more of those intermediate videos, or however you would like to phrase that in between the belts because I think now we are at a point to where the locks are going to start putting up a little bit of a fight and we are going to need to know and have more instructional videos on how to actually pick the lock and not just theories. That being said, I'd like to read the orange belt requirements and actually I think it's pretty well written so I'd like to just actually read it all. You can read it but anyway, those security pins designed to keep you at out are powerless against you. You're starting to find locks containing them easier to pick than those without. Your family is also starting to look at your growing collection of locks a bit strangely. It's okay. We understand you. Let's get an orange belt on you to confuse them further. It says here, this is important, you must submit a video of picking accomplishments for this rank. Videos must be in one continuous take. Uh -huh. Here's the caveat, and I think a lot of people are going to enjoy this one. Photographs will be accepted for locks that cannot be disassembled. Okay, so we've got an Ace 44 millimeter laminated is on the, the list. And we have a Ace 40 millimeter. Not on the list, it's 40 millimeters. It's only one, two, three, four pins. This one is five pins. Okay, the reason I have both of them out here is for a very good reason. This one picks fairly well and is very, very educational. This one, on the other hand, is uh, kind of what has happened to all of us and might be happening to you at the moment. Uh, they give me problems. I picked this, tried to pick this thing the other day and it put up one crazy, crazy fight. And I was wondering why. Um, I am an experienced picker. I can pick a lot of really, really good locks, but this thing really put up a fight. So it got me wondering why. So everyone says bad tolerances, um, security pins, this, that, and the other. Well, I figured out a reason, and this is why I wanted to share it with you guys so we'd all understand that if it happens, simply throw the lock away. Like, it's not worth it. Uh, this lock and me and my capabilities of picking it are not even worthy of me wasting any more time about it. And I'm going to show you. And then we're going to go ahead and start going and talking about security pins because now we're starting to encounter them. And if we haven't learned from the 140, then we need to start learning from it and these other level locks. But what I will say is, uh, unfortunately, I selected the Ace 44 millimeter for the lock picking belt ride along series, <clears throat> but I should have probably picked an A-Bus. A-Bus has way better tolerances, and even though they may actually be technically a little bit more difficult to lock, they um, are easier to learn from because of the nicer tolerances and we can feel what's going on in there. So it actually teaches us more. And this is why this lock was hard to pick. So if I can get it focused here, do we see anything out of the norm here? We see anything that may deaden our feedback. Well, first of all, look at where that core is and look at the outer ring, okay? So if I can just hold her still long enough and get the light correct, there we go. See the large gap at the top and see the very small gap at the bottom. So what's happening on this lock is every time that I tension it, and I'm gonna go ahead and insert a tension wrench and tension it, it actually gets worse. Now we can actually see the spot up at the top up here. It's much larger and it is riding all on the bottom down here. So what that does is totally deadens all my feedback and I really cannot find uh, good feedback on the lock and it really just keeps me guessing of what's going on inside. I have picked it successfully a few times and I doubt that I'll be able to actually um, pick it on camera. So 
even though I don't have to pick it on camera for this belt level, I can pick it off camera and actually get a photo of it, then that's what I'm gonna suggest. However, that being said, once we grow our skills, we'll be able to come back to locks like this and actually be able to pick them and figure them out no matter how bad the uh, problems are. As long as the key works, we'll actually be able to figure it out. So that being said, sometimes poor tolerances and crappy locks are actually more difficult to pick. And like I said before, uh, we can sit here and try to poke around and prod around and get the right feedback and fluctuate my tension, which is what I have to do on this one. But you know what? It's more simple just to simply throw the damn thing away, okay? It's not that big of a deal. We've got a lot of other locks to learn from and we have a lot of other locks to, to pick. And for our orange belt, we don't need that much. There's the Master 150. There are the A buses on the list. So get one of those. But I would suggest going ahead and getting one that has a non-removable core so that way we don't have to <clears throat> take the part, uh, the, the lock apart or, or take a video. So if it's non-removable, we don't have to do a video. So I do have this one, which we can learn a lot from today. And we're going to explain what the security pins are and what they're doing. And if you guys hear that noise in the background, I apologize, but it's my dog and he's a little riled up and he wants to, he wants to play. He's over there playing by himself. Actually right now, it's pretty funny. So anyway, um, we're gonna pick this guy. We can learn a lot from it because it has some security pins in there. But before we do that, let's zoom in a little bit. No fancy uh, air vent thing to come up today. We're just going to explain what I've printed out here. Now, if you haven't watched other videos from Lock, uh, Helpful Lock Picker or the like, uh, actually there's one on Reddit right now who's doing a series, uh, it's like a newer one. God, I wish I could remember it right now. But they're actually fantastic because they're actually like writing everything down and tell you what's what and they're going through that. But they've been posting a lot lately, so scroll back through and then watch all these videos and listen to what they have to say, because they're great. Uh, this illustration I actually got from Art of Lock Picking, and they've got a great write-up and great illustration. So go to artoflockpicking.com and then check out their Academy uh, tab and follow it, and then you'll, you'll end up seeing these. But anyway, mushroom pins, spool pins, serrated pin, basically all these are our security pins. Uh, we can see how the spool pin and mushroom pin and serrated pin will catch on these little ledges. And now we think that that, that is set because this, pe this key pin is gonna fall back down and it's gonna feel loose. As we're picking it, it's gonna feel loose. And we're gonna be, oh, okay, that's set. Well, guess what? If we, especially on a spool pin, more so than a mushroom pin and serrated pin, and we can elaborate on that later, once you push up on it, you can actually feel this core rotate backwards as you're pushing up on this. And that's because this pin usually isn't set here, it's, it's caught here. And then as you push up, now it comes to this ledge and you feel that rotate backwards. And we're gonna see it in this lock. This lock does it extremely well. You can see the bidding on it and these lower ones really rotate a lot. The higher ones don't so much, and the recent videos from Helpful Lock Picker explains that. So we're going to need to start uh, looking through that. What I will say is for Orange Belt, I believe the Master 570 is on there. It has a dead cord and dead shackles, an absolutely beautiful lock, and some of them are easy to pick, and some of them are really, really difficult. I'm going to say go ahead and stay away from that one, just because we don't want to get any downers. We want to have productivity. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and bring the vice in. Uh, to teach you guys on this lock. <clears throat> and hopefully it's gonna be a close up and this is a pretty raw video, meaning not much preparation here. I've had a busy day and I'm kinda tired. But anyway, I'm sorry for the lighting. So, we're gonna use top of QA tension and we are going to insert here. And we're gonna start attacking. We got a multi-pick and a 25 thousandths. 
coming in on the side. Now this, we're, we're it's a paracentric keyway. We're using uh, light to medium tension. And since it's a paracentric keyway, I cannot attack it straight up and down. I've got to come from the side. So let's get in there, get pin one. Not much happening on pin one. Pin two, real click. Oh, a little click off three. Oh, totally blinding you guys from what's going on. Um, I apologize. I'm gonna try to zoom out. And I'm gonna try to keep my big fat hands out of the way. It's gonna be harder to touch. So what we're looking for is a false set, okay? So if we watch this part up here, then we can get a false set and you'll see where the tension wrench falls over. And that's because we're landing on that spool pin. God. That was a set. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the camera so I'm picking through the camera right now. It's gonna be a little difficult, I think. Oh, there we go. False set. Okay. So I touched pin three and she's falling over to a false set. If you reference the video before, this was sitting about here. And once the false set, it came in over to here. So now let's see if we can find some counter rotation because what we have, we'll get that back in the way, is now the middle one where it says spools pin. That is what's happening inside of the lock right now. So that's why we're rotated over to the side. And as I find that binding pin and I rotate it back, pin one is rotating, it's counter rotation. When I first touch that key pin, I can actually feel it in my thumb above and we're gonna physically see it. Now Bosnia Bill likes to put little marks on his locks and on his core. He'll put a mark here and a mark here and then you can watch that. So if you need the visual aid, go ahead and do it. I don't think you should, I think you should do it strictly off feel, but to each his own. And you can see it rotated. I let off, you see it rotate back. I'm gonna do it. See that rotate? Watch, watch this part right up here. I'm gonna do it again. Pin one. And then I'm gonna lighten up rotation. Lighten up, I'm lightening up. I'm lightening up. Now I'm not gonna lighten up anymore. I'm gonna hold. And I'll lighten up a little bit more because I feel like it's gonna go. And then I'm gonna tighten up and just hold. Look how much farther it's moved. And boom, she's set. Now that's fine. Oh, there you go. And I touch her just a little bit more and she dropped into a deeper fall set. That's usually indicative that I've got two spool pins. So I've had the one and now I've got another one. So now it's in a deeper fall set. Again, reference the uh, spool pin picture there. And that's what's going on. The core is rotated, but I'm hung up on one. Let's go find it. It's really important these security pins and spools and serrated pins because once we start jumping up into the 7240, which I think is our next level up, it's got one standard pin in the front, pin one, and then all the others are spools. It's a six pin lock. It's a really fun lock. I feel like that's got some counter rotation right there. It's a little tight. I'm just gonna check and make sure. Okay, four is good. Okay, so I was correct, it was there. But I just wanna make sure. I feel something happening. I think I'm on pin two. I'm gonna leave pin two alone. Go to pin three. Once I find it, picking off the side here. I just wanna keep trying to pick through the camera. It's very difficult, there we go. Now again, if we take note real quick, we can see how the tolerance on this lock aren't that good either. If we look at that outer rim, but you can see I actually have clearance at the bottom. The other one I had no clearance, so you know what? Throw that lock away, man. It's just, you know, it's not worth it, the cheaper locks and why we're fighting it because it's just gonna put us in a slump and make us doubt our abilities. So, 
She's counter rotating back. Okay. Now it clicked, and now she's back into a false set. So now we gotta go find the next pin. Seems like it's got three security pins, or I'm just hung up on a standard, but usually the standard one's set first. And then you gotta find all the other spools. And now, when I'm looking for a spool, use lighter tension, hold it in place. Hold that tension in place where it is, with that thumb, but very lightly. If you pay attention, uh, to the thumb position there. It's not depressed that much. It's just holding it. It's nice and light and I can lighten up a little bit. You know, it's not white. You, you know, it's not hard. Okay. It's just nice and light. See, so we'll try to get it in frame here, both of them. But pay attention to that top rivet and where we go from there. 16 minutes, I know it's long, but we're getting there. We're about to pop it open and then the video is done. Sorry guys. I was hoping it'd be a shorter video, but hey, I hope you're learning. Counter rotation. Let her come back. She's about to set, I can feel it. Deeper. Almost the same false set, but there he goes. There's another spool pin set. Now I'm tapping on each one of these because the the, the bad tolerances sometimes need to just tap on each one just to make sure it's not hung up on the bottom part of the spool. But now I'm on another one, and I'm going to get some counter rotation, and it's going to open. No open, <laughs> which is great. Keep me guessing. More counter rotation. Can we see it? How far I am away from that top rivet? Still no open. Maybe I'll let one drop in the in between, but no big deal. Just keep working it. It's actually pretty fun. I love spool pins, and I love that I gotta sit here and work them. All the way in the back seems to be the one. So let's try her out. Counter rotation, oh, huge counter rotation. And she's open. Okay guys, so uh, hopefully we've learned why crappy locks are crappy and why they literally just need to go into the rubbish. Okay, uh, again, I'm gonna pick this uh, and get a photo of it. Uh, I could maybe even fight for a video of it, but there's really no reason to do so, okay? Uh, we can see how much is bottomed out on that bottom side and why that's dead and in feedback. And on the inside of the lock, all those horrible machinings and everything else are gonna contribute to that. So take that into consideration, study up on all of your security pins, comment me and ask me for advice if you're having any problems. And we will do another video on the pick for episode five. And maybe I'll try to fight to get this one on there, but really we're not gonna learn much from it. I think we learned a lot from that lock and we know how to work through that. So thank you guys for watching. Aloha.